A third down pass, Tobin wrote to Howard Cassidy, is good for short yardage, but it's not enough for a first down. On fourth down, Yale Larry takes a high pass from center and just manages to get the kick away. Billy Reynolds pulls in the punt on his own 19, where John Gordy makes the tackle almost immediately. On Cleveland's first scrimmage play, Plum pitches out to Lou Carpenter. Carpenter gets good blocking as the Browns pick up 27 yards. Lou Carpenter slants over the left side of the line for three yards before a pack of Lions throws him back. The Carpenter brothers are carrying Cleveland on this drive. Preston Carpenter pulls in Milt Plum's pass and lugs it to the Lions 32. Lou Carpenter gets back in the act with a four yard gain on a cross buck. Mill Plum, first year quarterback from Penn State, rolls out to the right for a pass. Preston Carpenter is on the receiving end and Cleveland is on the Detroit 15. Watch the blocking on this play. Jim Brown has the ball and that's Jim Ray Smith bowling over the linebacker. Carl Karlevich clips Brown out of bounds on the 10 yard line. For the sixth time in seven plays, one of the Carpenter boys paces the Cleveland attack. Preston grabs a milk plum pass and it's goal to go. Cleveland caps an 80 yard drive as Lou Carpenter hammers into the end zone. All told the Carpenters accounted for 75 yards in the Browns best showing of the day. Lou Groza Cleveland's extra point automaton calmly kicks the conversion. The scoreboard now reads Detroit 31 Cleveland 14. Cleveland's Ray Renfro takes time out for a sponge full of water. The Browns, who clinched the Eastern title in the 11th week of the season, may be a little rusty in their timing, for they've had a two-week layoff. Lou Groza puts the ball in play with a high end-over-end -end kick. Yale Larry decides to run it out of the end zone and he makes his way to the 22 yard line. Tobin wrote, electrifies Lion Loyalists and breaks the Browns back. Tobin tosses a cross country pass to Jim Dorn and the play goes all the way. It's a sensational 78 yard touchdown, the second longest in playoff history and gives the Lions a cozy 38 to 14 spread. Number 52, Frank Gatsky, the Detroit center, is probably the happiest player in the Lions' den. After 11 years with Cleveland, he was traded to Detroit, and now he's hunting his former teammates and coaches. Jim Martin gets underneath the ball and lifts a high kickoff to the Cleveland 11. Jim Brown runs it back to the 28, where the kicker, Jim Martin, makes the tackle. Milt Plum fades for a pass, but he's rushed right off his feet by an inspired Lion line. Detroit's defense has been dynamite all day. Detroit safety man Yale Larry selects the different helmets for the punt return. Larry, who is also the lion kicker, wears a face mask when returning punt. It's fourth down and 17 yards to go for Cleveland as Ken Kahn stands in punt formation. Kahn's kick is long and high, and Larry calls for a fair catch on the Detroit 42. The Lions begin another goalward drive with Gene Gedman supplying the leg work. Tobin Roach, who is playing probably the best game of his eight-year career, careens through the Cleveland secondary for 10 yards. A personal foul penalty gives the Lions a first down on the Browns 23. 
Tossin Tobin continues his spectacular play. Rhodes rifles a shot to Steve Junker for another jackpot play. It's Tobin's third payoff pass and Junker's second touchdown. The Lions are way out in front at 45 to 14. Jim Martin comes forward to kick off again. Billy Reynolds picks it up on the seven. Shakes off one tackler, but that's all. Gordy and Martin nail Reynolds on the 27. Cleveland is not giving up. The Browns call on their big gun, Jim Brown, who explodes through the middle on a 13-yard run. Bill Plum attempts a pass. Gene Cronin hits him from behind. The ball is free, and Jerry Perry snaps it out of the air for an interception. He tried his end possession on the Cleveland 32 as the third quarter ends. Fourth quarter, and the Lions roar is as loud as ever. Tobin Rhodes completes his 12th pass on 19 tries. Dave Middleton makes the catch of the day as he spears the pig pelt with a fancy Dan dive that dazes the Browns and amazes the crowd. It's Detroit by an overwhelming 52 to 14 score. Well, there's Jim Martin at it again, and he boots the ball to the seven yard line. Billy Reynolds makes a 20 yard return before Stan Campbell dumps him. Here comes Lou Carpenter, running right into our Miller High Life camera as he picks up five yards. Milt Plum fades to pass, but the Lions are in on him. Plum bobs through the line and picks up a first down on the Detroit 41. Lou Carpenter carries this time and dents the Detroit defense for nine more yards. Jim Brown goes to the outside for a first down. Jack Christensen makes the tackle and it's a beauty. Detroit bolsters its defense and Milt Plum fades for a fourth down pass. Preston Carpenter makes a juggling catch, but he stopped on the 23, far short of a first down. Detroit's defensive alignment comes off the field with the situation well in hand. Jerry Rakow, number 80, warms up. He'll replace Tobin Roach. The Lion attack is relentless. The Motor City men are on the march again, with Gene Gedman going for a six-yard gain. A personal foul penalty is called against Cleveland, giving Detroit an additional 15 yards. Tobin Roach comes out of the game to a standing ovation. Roach scored one touchdown and passed for four. All told, Tobin's running and passing accounted for 307 yards. Jerry Rykow, the new quarterback, gives Cassidy an inside handoff and hop along, hops along for 35 yards. Another personal foul puts the ball on the Cleveland 20. Howard Cassidy grabs a handoff and thumps through the middle for short yardage. On the rollout play, Jerry Rykow joins the scoring parade with this thriller from Miller. Hop along Cassidy, loops a lasso around the leather and it's touchdown Lions. This is Cassidy's first championship game and it's one that he and the rest of the Lions will long remember. In the extra point department, Jim Martin makes it seven for seven as Detroit climaxes its greatest day. The final score reads Detroit Lions 59, Cleveland Browns 14. The loss is the worst Paul Brown's Cleveland team has ever suffered, and it avenges a 56 to 10 defeat by the Browns in the 1954 championship. Coach George Wilson caps a spectacular first season with this thrilling victory. Every Lion played well, but the hero of the day has to be Tobin Roach. Rode, who was secured at the start of the season as an insurance quarterback, pays a dandy dividend as he pilots the Detroit Lions to football's world championship.